I'd like to call this meeting to order. Would you please stand with me and recite the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much for coming out tonight. Commissioner McDowell has an excused absence for this meeting. And at this time, uh, I'm going to add something to our agenda. We're going to have a little update from Andy, and he's going to talk to us a little bit about some zones. And so I'm going to turn the meeting over to him at this time. Perfect. Thank you, Mayor Commissioner. Um, last meeting, we talked just briefly on the new Opportunity Zone program that was created by the Tax Cuts and Job Act of 2017. Um, we also, well, you we reviewed a letter that was submitted to the governor's office um, requesting his consideration of a few of the census tracts that are eligible um, in the Shelton area. Um, since that time, the state has uh, I actually released more information and established a pro process with the Department of Commerce for a competitive application um, of these zones. And so we're kind of adjusting how we approach that and get this application done uh, for next Monday is when the cutoff is. Um, just a little review on the Opportunity Zone, um, that program. In short, it allows for a private investment of unrealized capital gains into opportunity, opportunity funds, um, which can then be directed into um, investments that are uh, specifically for economic development in uh, designated opportunity zones. Um, currently, at the IRS and the U.S. Treasury, they're still working out details on what um, investments those capital gains will come from and what specifically um, those funds can be directed into. But right now we're just focused on what census tracts will be designated as those opportunity zones. Um, you have a map um, included with these other letters that, I, that I've given you. Um, in Mason County, there are eight opportunity zones that qualify. Um, four of those, um, numbers four, five, six, and seven, um, cover the entirety of Shelton um, city limits. Um, we've worked with the county also on this and, and the EDC. Um, and kind of how it's working with the Department of Commerce, just in short, is that each county is able to basically designate one of these tracks as a set aside that will automatically be designated as an opportunity zone. And so we're working on uh, submitting an application for um, this number five, six, and seven. The, the county, sorry, going back to that, the county and the, the EDC have um, agreed to um, submit, well, I guess designate uh, area four. Um, as the ADO that set aside um, track for the county. Um, so that, that, that will automatically happen. And then we'll be submitting those applications for number five, six, and seven. And so you have uh, three different letters of support in front of you. Um, we'll be submitting three separate applications, one for each one of those zones. And that letter will correspond um, with each one of those applications. Um, the third, excuse me, the fourth letter that you have, um, the county, uh, there's zone number 11, which is up in the upper right section of the map. Um, covers basically the entirety of Belfair, and that the county is working on submitting a competitive application for that. And so they've requested that uh, we provide a, a, a letter of support for their application as well. So those are the four letters that you have, and we're just asking that you agree to sign those so that we can submit those with the applications to the Department of Commerce. And that's all I have. Okay, and so tonight I think it's a good idea, uh, you know, and I think that uh, we would be in support of this. Uh, I don't know what Commissioner Dorsey feels about it, but we've been talking for a little while about this. It's an excellent opportunity to uh, get a kind of a partnership with our uh, the, with the county commissioners and work together right. on some uh, strategy for opening up these uh, opportunity zones and uh, hopefully we'll stir some economic uh, growth out of these. And so I have no problem in signing uh, those letters and sending those off. But that's my two cents on it. So I have to agree. So, so at this time, I guess you would be looking for a motion. Um, I, I don't know if we. I don't know if we need an actual motion. Can we concur? Just a few, I, I suppose. Yeah. Just well, I just to didn't agree concur because it's easier than a motion. That works. All right. So, I concur. You concur? Yep. So I think we're just going to concur to sign those letters and get the process moving forward. Perfect. Good enough. Thank, Thank you, you very much, much, Andy. Appreciate it. All right. Next is our weekly commission um, little reports, activities, and things that we're involved in. And so I'll turn the meeting over to Commissioner Dorsey at this time. All right. Well, today I had a Mason Transit Authority Board meeting. Just got over a couple hours ago. Tomorrow, the 21st, 
I'll be going down to uh, Grace Harbor County with Chief Moody, Kevin Schutte, and Abe Gardner from the Mason County Health Department to observe their needle exchange program. March 22 and 29, staff briefing, staff briefing with Vicki. And uh, March 23rd is the Basin 3 kickoff. And that's pretty much what I have the next week to 10 days. Thank you very much. Um, tomorrow morning I will be attending my uh, criminal justice board meeting. And on Friday, it's exciting, it's a historical day for the city of Shelton. We are going to break ground on the Basin 3 project. And so I think we're going to have some hard hats and some shovels and some microphones. And it's, uh, it's open to the public. And it's going to be located right over on that end of town. And I'm not exactly sure where. Could you help me with that there, sir? We will be at 2nd and Birch, so basically directly behind uh, Mickey's Deli. Okay, and that is going to be, I believe, at 4 o'clock. That is correct. On Friday. Okay, looking forward to that. Next Monday, I'm planning to be attending a, uh, a hearing over in the, the courthouse on Monday. Uh, I usually have a staff briefing once a week, and I'm uh, looking forward to these next two weeks of being very productive for the city of Shelton. That completes our weekly commission reports, and at this time, we have a uh, general public comment period. Please, you can come to the microphone. It is a political season. We're asking no applauses and no political speeches. Come and uh, give us your input on what you're thinking about, and it's three minutes per person. For anyone that wants to do that, you just need to sign a little card that's right over there. So at this time, do we have somebody signed up? We do. We have Jody Swantek. Oh, I have to be first. Be first. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Okay, I just kind of got a little note here. I've listened around town and um, from different people and everything, and, and I think that um, the commissioners, the, the, the ones that, the, the people that want the commissioners kicked out of office, um, are they offering any solutions to our problems? To begin with, these commissioners have lowered our debt by $6 million than getting our infrastructure built with 100% grant money funding. And we're finally building houses again. So if you ask me, the ones that are very negative about the commissioners should be the ones that are kicked out. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. <clears throat> Nancy? Would you mind stating your Thank you. I know, my handwriting <laughs> so is cursive. Okay, my name is Nancy Lugalia, and I've been a resident of Shelton for, uh, for 10 years. And my uh, comment is towards Director Gregory. Uh, you presented info on the city's biosolids program not too long ago, and I'm eager to hear your report on whether or not the extra money brought in by this program will be used to help lower the sewer rates for the citizens of Shelton. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Mike Olson. Uh, Mike Olson. Uh, last week there was a special meeting held and the, co and the commissioners decided that the uh, taxpayers will foot their bill, their legal bills. And at that meeting I made a comment that I thought there was an RCW that if they lose at the hearing that they would be paying it back and I misinterpreted that. Uh, win or lose, they will not be paying back that money. And that brings me to uh, Mayor Kronz kind of glossed over his next Monday's hearing is a historical hearing also because it's to be determined whether he will be up for a recall. So Monday at 1.30 in Superior Court Building. Come have fun. Thank you for your comments. That was all. Okay. One more. Sorry. There's a card at the last minute. Better late than never, sir. Thank you. We have Marilyn Aaron. So I just wanted to say that um, it's nice to finally see some of the things that I feel are very important to this community being addressed. Commissioner Dorsey, it's awesome that you and um, Mr. I'm sorry, Chief Moody, 
and you said Kevin Schutte, Kevin Schutte are going down to see the needle exchange program. I, for one, have children, and I've been out in the community and seen needles left around, and so I definitely feel that it's something that our community needs. So that's wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, two weeks ago, the gentleman that was here, I think his name was Tom Davis, how he brought up about the program that's been fully funded for uh, homeless veterans for the community. That's awesome. I hope that um, you commissioners and you mayor can look at that and see if there's possibly a area that they can lease because that's another issue that really strongly <coughs> needs to be addressed in our community. And um, also, uh, Mo, uh, Smoke and Mo's, she in the past has mentioned about like beautification for like the alleyways. And I know she grew up in South Carolina, if I remember correctly. And Barbecue there's- Barbecue country. Yes, yeah. but where she grew up, they were able to really beautify their alleyways. And I know that, I think that, you know, as a community member, that's something that we'd really like to see as well. So I don't know what the options are for that, but that's something that I hope that you also possibly look into. So I just wanna say thank you. I have, although I don't always agree with you, I've noticed that there are things that you are looking towards improving, so I appreciate that. Thank you for your comments. All right, that concludes our general public comment period. And at this time, uh, are we ready for a reading of our um, consent agenda? Yes. It would be you, sir? Yes. Could we please have that? Voucher number 16873 in the amount of $896.24. Voucher number 16900 in the amount of $11,132.59. Vouchers numbered 16901 through 16971 in the amount of $326,271.67. Payroll warrants numbered 1349 through 1493 and 16874 through 16894 in the amount of $616,000, I'm sorry, $616,928.68. Minutes from the business meeting of March 6, 2018. So is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as read? I, get, I motion to approve the consent agenda as read. Okay, there's a motion and I will second that and a second any further discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Passes. All right, item number E under the business agenda is uh, talking about our Basin 3 sewer um, <coughs> testing, uh, material testing services and I'll turn the meeting over to our public works director, Craig Gregory at this time. <clears throat> Thanks, Mayor and Commissioner. Uh, a few weeks ago, we brought forward materials testing uh, just in general for the city uh, for in-house projects. Uh, we are required to bring forward individual testing for each project also. Um, so we are bringing forward another materials testing uh, contract <clears throat> for the Sewer Basin 3 project. We did an RFQ uh, that went out uh, several weeks ago and got two proposals. Uh, the highest scoring proposal was construction testing laboratories. Uh, so we are requesting to move forward with a contract uh, with them to do all of our materials testing for uh, trench backfill, road restoration, and other materials testing, including asphalt um, for the entirety of the Basin 3 project. Any questions or comments for Craig Gregory? Not for me. Um, basically, the reason we're testing that is because we want to make sure that the type of fill and the compacting and whatnot is all done so when we put the road on there, it doesn't get a bunch of potholes and is done right. Is that what the testing's for? That's correct. And also so. the surface grade also uh, with the asphalt um, and subgrade material. So, yeah, all the way through the project from where the pipe is laid all the way through new asphalt. Great. Well, it appears that we concur to place this on the um, consent agenda for April 3rd. Thank you very much. Next is we're going to talk about some ordinances, and they have been amended. 
And I'm going to turn the meeting over to our interim financial director, Terry. Terry Schnitzer. I would say that, but I'm not going to make any mistakes. So I'm going to just go Terry. Mayor Cross, I, this is Terry Schnitzer. I know, I practiced it. Okay. Yeah, just, just so that you get it straight. Okay, Thanks, let's just Kevin. ask the city manager, did we not have this discussion in your room today? We did have. And how many times did I say that last name? Several, right? Yes. I'm still not confident enough. So I'm going to call her Terry at the moment, and I'll, I'll get there, but um, could you please take over at this time? <laughs> Thank you, Mayor and Commissioner. So this ordinance is to amend the water appeal process. Um, the finance department performs periodic reviews of the ordinances that pertain to the finance department. And so this, through this review, we identified that the appeal process for the water charges needed to provide clear notice and um, an opportunity for the user to be heard. Uh, we wanted this appeal process to be extremely clear for the user and for staff. And uh, we identified a, spe a specified timeline to follow as well as um, who would be the decision makers to the appeal. Uh, this was carefully reviewed with legal and staff and that I believe that will make this process uh, work for everybody. So I, I ask you to put um, this ordinance 1918-0318 and place it on the action agenda. For April 3rd. Any uh, questions or comments? <coughs> no questions. Um, I did have a long discussion today with uh, our city manager uh, about this and wanted to just make sure that I understood it correctly before tonight's meeting and on both item number one and item number two. Uh, it's to the um, <clears throat> Congratulations to our staff, the financial staff, and also our legal staff that sees things that need to be updated from time to time. And this is a prime example of taking something that was a, a three sentence and making it probably an eight sentence document that is uh, better for the citizens. And so uh, that came from you guys, and we appreciate you making a note of that and us uh, going into this process. So it appears that we concur to place this um, on our um, action agenda for April 3rd, 2018. And I do need oh. to have a first reading. Oh, is that, I got that under line right there. So before we concur to do that, can you please have a first reading? Ordinance number 1918-0318, an ordinance of the City of Shelton, Washington, relating to water service appeals, amending section 15.28.120 of the city, I'm sorry, of the Shelton Municipal Code. All right, we concur. Okay, item number three is very similar. It's just the sewer instead of the water. So. Right, and wanted to point out that it was for the disconnection of utilities. So, and, um, but yes, the language mirrors what the water uh, charge, the water appeal process is also. Any other questions or comments? Thank you very much for seeing these things, and let's uh, also have a first reading for this ordinance. Ordinance number 1919-0318, an ordinance of the City of Shelton, Washington, relating to sewer service appeals, amending section 14.28.090 of the Shelton Municipal Code. And uh, we do concur to place this on the action agenda for April 3rd, 2018. Thank you very much. Thank you. Terry. All right, next is the action agenda items. And at this time, I'm going to turn the meeting over to our senior planner, Jason Doe's, and he's going to talk to us about um, a subject. About a, a subject. subject, that is correct. Um, Mountain View Elementary School, to be specific, um, here before you this evening in hopes that you would agree with staff's recommendation to pass a resolution that would approve a new replacement Mountain View Elementary School uh, in an area northwest of where the existing school stands now on school district property. To give you a little bit of background, I think you're aware the Shelton School District was successful, or rather the voters helped them be successful in passing a school bond in February 2017 that included, among other things, an entire replacement for Mountain View Elementary, which is one of the oldest schools and the, the least upgraded in the district. And to that end, city staff held a public hearing back in February, 
and recommended to the hearings examiner that the replacement school be approved, subject to seven conditions. The um, replacement school actually required a special use permit, which is a little bit unique the, in that we don't see too many of those. The reason being, uh, Mountain View Elementary is located within the outskirts of our airport overlay zones. And I won't bore you with the details of those, but essentially, um, we're required to look at some very specific things, you know, including the potential for no uh, noise related to overflights of planes, how they may impact uh, not only school functions, but also in the future, the potential to impact airport overlay, I mean, rather airport operations. And in essence, the, the district did a great job of working not only with city staff, but port staff when they were developing their, their projects for the bond, uh, in particular, the high school, which you'll see at a later date, but also Mountain View Elementary. So. In a nutshell, the hearings examiner agreed with staff's recommendation, agreed with our uh, seven conditions we recommended, and you have his recommendation to the commission as required through the special use permit process mm -hmm. attached to the staff report. Mm -hmm. And what I've done is develop a resolution that we're recommending you um, approve that references directly the hearings examiner's decision and basically incorporates that into the resolution and allows them to proceed with their building permitting process and eventually uh, construction of a new school. Um, we also have a guest here that if we had any questions, I think representing the school district, and I forgot his name, but uh, we thank you for coming to our meeting. And uh, if we have any special questions, this gentleman with the yellow tie, we can call upon him. <laughs> Sounds like the city staff and the the hearings examiner have come to an agreement. I was talking to Jason, but he's like, he'll get What was that? Out. I'm sorry. It appears that the staff and the hearings examiner have come to an agreement on the steps forward. And that uh, in we were presented this last week, and we're, we're waiting for uh, some other things to kind of take place. And so it's kind of a moving target in a way. But it appears that at this time, we are ready for first and final reading on this resolution. Absolutely, that is correct. And um, to elaborate on what you said, I, I asked the commission to place this on your action agenda at your last regular meeting, but we hadn't yet received the hearings examiner's recommendation. And the reason I did that, I mean, realizing that's not normal protocol, the reason I did that is we're trying to keep these projects moving forward because I actually anticipated it would be approved. We, we really, I mean, I can't emphasize how much the, the school district worked with not only the voters in developing the projects, but local agencies. So there really was no controversy I'm aware of in the process. And Good. it was, we just hadn't received the uh, recommendation at the time I brought it before you uh, earlier. Any other comments, questions? I was wondering, do you have anything that you want to add? No? Okay. Uh, um, the work that we've done with the city and the staff, I think they've uh, uh, presented the case uh, very well, and um, like I said, I'm here to answer any questions if there are any. If not, um, Jason has presented the case much be better than I could, I think. Thank you very much. So at this point, are we ready for a first and final reading? Is that what we need? Yes, sure. we do need a reading. Yep. So and we also we need to um, ask for public comment. Uh, Action item, thank you very much for that. If anybody wants to specifically talk about this issue, now is the opportunity. Do we have anybody signed in? We have no one signed up. Okay. So, at this time, could we please have that first and final reading of the resolution? Resolution number 1119-0318, a resolution of the City of Shelton Commission concurring with the hearings examiner's recommendation regarding special use permit 01-17 an application by the Shelton School District to construct a Mountain View Elementary School replacement school within Zone 6 of the airport overlay zone. So, is there a motion to approve this resolution? I'll move that the City Commission concur, well, I'll concur with the hearings examiner's recommendation of approval of a special use permit request made by the Shelton School District for the construction of a replacement Mountain View school, Elementary School by approving resolution 1119-0318. And I would second that motion. Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes.
Thank you very much. Item number two under our action agenda is uh, another construction support project management theory that's going to be presented to you again by Craig Gregory. Thanks, Mayor and Commissioner. As we talked about a couple of weeks ago, uh, we are needing uh, construction and management support uh, from outside uh, consulting agency for all of our projects that we have going on for the 2018-2019 season, uh, including Sewer Basin 3, the Downtown Connector Project, and also the Turner Street uh, reconstruction. And uh, when we looked at all of the consultants that applied uh, for this service, we ultimately ended up picking Gray and Osborne uh, for this uh, support. They are directly involved with the design of the downtown connector project and have been involved in uh, some of the questions on Sewer Basin 3 when we were going through the redesign. So they are familiar with that project also and directly involved in the uh, design of not only Turner but the downtown connector project. And all of these uh, costs out of this construction management will be coming out of budgeted funds that are allocated to those projects already, including uh, grant funding uh, that can be charged against for these services. All right. Uh, has anybody signed up to talk about this specific? We have never signed up. Okay. So. Uh, it does not appear. Do we have any, you have any questions on this? One? No. Comments? Okay, good job <coughs> for staff. And it appears we don't need a first or final reading on this. We just need a motion. I move to approve award of the contract for construction support, project management services, and authorize the mayor to sign the contract with Gray and Osborne Incorporated for final execution. Okay, there's a motion, and I will second that motion. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> motion passes. Item number three is about black rock, and that's not a musical term. That is not. There you go. So basic uh, maintenance of roadways and shoulders uh, using black rock. We had a contract that ran through the end of 2017. So just looking at another contract for uh, that supply. And we did get two proposals back, uh, one from Kennedy Creek and one also from Northwest Rock that runs the old Little Creek quarry across from Taylortown. Unfortunately, that quarry is not uh, staffed at all times. So they would need some lead time. Uh, pricing was very similar uh, in both cases. So we ended up picking uh, Kennedy Creek Quarry uh, for those services uh, strictly on the ability uh, to get product on an as needed basis. Yeah. Okay, has anybody signed up to want to talk about this? We have no one signed up for comments. Okay, any questions or comments for Craig Gregory? Uh, I have none. We look at these things uh, as they're going along, and uh, the staff is doing a fantastic job on pretty much answering most of our questions before we get here. We need rock, and we need black rock, and so uh, I guess at this point we need a motion. I move to approve the bulk purchase of black rock by authorizing the commission to sign the award form and the mayor to sign the contract with Kennedy Creek Quarry for final execution once it is returned to the city. All right, there's a motion, and I will second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> motion carries. Item number four is, again, a Craig Gregory uh, opportunity, and this is about our downtown connector design contract amendment. So again, Mayor and Commissioner, we had a few add-ons to this project as we went along. Uh, in the original scope of work, it did not include uh, things such as the roundabout um, that ultimately ended up in our project, uh, illumination, some of the 
rain garden aspects um, and storm drainage. So we did have a slight increase still within budget um, of $65,000 uh, to get that entire project 100% uh, designed and ready to go out to bid. Um, we are actually out to bid now. Uh, we wanted to get that out before we got too much further into construction season. So any of these last minute things we will address over the next couple of weeks in amendments to the contract um, or the bid uh, specs. And we will be moving forward with that uh, with a bid opening of April 11th. But again, with going out to bid, we really wanted to get that out before we got too much further into construction season. So any of these last minute things that will come up uh, that we need to finalize, we will be uh, fixing through amendments uh, to the bid specs um, moving forward. And we have until the 1st of April uh, to do that. So we've still got a little bit of time to finish up and, and get through these last few things. All right. Has anybody signed up for a uh, comment about this? We have no one signed up. Okay. Uh, any questions or comments for Craig Gregory? Yeah, I... Um I thought I read somewhere, Craig, that I couldn't find it just now, but um, will this $65,000 be covered in the grant funding? That is correct. Okay. There is a, there was a portion uh, through the TIB grant yeah. uh, that was just over 300000 I believe it was, for design. Um, and that was designated for design only through uh, the TIB grant. Mm. Uh, so again, well within budget uh, through this process and any of this excess that wasn't covered by the grant will be match funding uh, to the grant that we are required to um, have uh, for a cost to the city of Shelton. At this point, uh, we are not sure that we are going to have any costs with the uh, direct appropriation through the transportation budget uh, that we just received uh, not too long ago. Uh, we are hoping for some favorable bids that will come in um, at the engineer's estimate or lower, which would give us the opportunity to have another project 100% grant funded. So we're keeping our fingers crossed for that one that uh, we don't need any of our city funds uh, out, the transportation funds. We will have some storm drain funds going to the project, but we're keeping our fingers uh, crossed that we do not have any transportation funds going to this. And this will be, you know, pretty much the end of design work? We don't. It is the end of we design. Don't have, we are there. Yeah, okay. All right. So I would entertain a motion to approve at this time. <laughs> I move to allow Great Osborne Incorporated to complete the additional engineering tasks as identified in Exhibit F by authorizing the mayor to sign the amendment of the Alder Street design contract. And I second that motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> motion passes. And our last item under the action agenda is... Um, about some uh, prosecution services contract here, and our interim city manager, Vicki Look, is going to present that to us at this time. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, presented this uh, contract on March 6th, <coughs> and it was uh, with Young Glove and Coker PLLC, who we have been contracting with for quite a period of time. But it was time to review that contract and look at uh, some amendments that we might want to make. Uh, for the efficiencies of the court. So we did uh, negotiate the contract with them. It came out to a little bit higher, uh, approximately $6,000, $6, which we think we can absorb in the budget. If not, later in the year, we would, we would come back with an amendment to that. Uh, but we did start talking about this contract uh, in January, and at that time we had agreed that when we finally uh, came to some terms that we could recommend to the city commission, that we would ask for retroactivity uh, to January 1. So I present the contract to you today again and uh, would answer any questions that you might have. Has anybody from the public signed up to speak on this matter? Okay. Yes. So any questions or comments concerning this? I was wondering about how long 
it's been since we've renegotiated the contract? Well, I don't believe that. We have uh, renewed this contract for the last five or six years. Yeah. So. Okay. It's been quite a period of time. All right. Job well done. I would entertain a motion at this time. I move to approve the prosecution services contract with Young Glove and Coker retro retroactive to January 1, 2018. Okay. I second that motion. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Item number G is our administration reports. At this time, I'll turn the meeting over again to our interim city manager, Vicki Look. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, just wanted to point out that we had talked to uh, the commission about um, getting, uh, putting out an RFP for uh, requests for proposals for a recruiter to uh, search for a new city manager. And we sent those out on um, about the first of uh, March, and we expect to have a uh, return on that on uh, approximately March 28th. So at our next meeting, we would hope that we could bring a proposal to you uh, for the selection of a search firm. And so that next meeting would be, I believe, uh, April 3rd. Thank so you. Just a little bit of an update on our recruitment process. Thank you very much. Is there anything else? Yes. Chief Moody has the report. Chief, there's more. Oh, my gosh. Thank you, Mayor and Commissioners. So uh, Alex Apostle, the school superintendent, and I for the last two years have been looking at school safety, how we to improve school safety. We've partnered quite a bit with training and stuff for school staff. Unfortunately, due to some tragedies around the nation in the recent months, those have intensified, those conversations. And we brought forward from the Shelton Police Department a proposal to the school district at last week's school board meeting of what we figured in to be the, the quickest, safest, and best way to ensure safety and reduce risk to our students and the staff. And that was the first part of the proposal is that Shelton Police Department, within a matter of two weeks, will pony up officers on overtime to be We'll have three full-time school resource officers to cover the schools. It'd be region-based, in other words, Shelton High and OBJH Olympic Middle School will be one campus, one officer. Second part will be Mountain View and Olympic. And the third would be the downtown, which would be Choice Evergreen and Bordeaux. Um, I went to our staff and our patrol officers and asked them, from now until the end of the school year, until the plan comes in place for the following year, would you be willing to work an extra day a week if needed to cover the schools and it was overwhelmingly yes. Um, the school district um, has <laughs> offered up and it should be coming to the next board meeting next Tuesday which I would encourage folks to attend if possible if they are interested in this. A proposal to for the school district to pay overtime for officers for two officers. We already have one school resource officer for the remainder of the school year. While that is occurring in the interim basis Hiring two more full-time police officers in the city of Shelton contracted to the Shelton School District. Um, we will handle equipment, training, uh, vehicles, et cetera, for those officers. They will handle salary. Um, this is a proposal brought forward to them. I'd encourage the commission to help us in that endeavor to ensure the safety of our students and staff in the community. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions you have at this point of how we move forward with this from here. I would just say thank you very much, Mr. Moody, for what you what you do with your job as you look at areas bef uh, that you might improve in before these things happen so that when there is uh, something that's hitting our country like it's hitting it right now, that you had already made steps on how to improve that and that you with Dr. Apostle, it appears come up with a wonderful plan that the city and the school district can work together on, but that was your leadership that helped Plan for, start that planning before anything happened where we really probably needed it like we do now. And so I think it's great leadership on your part. Thank you. But I, I can say it's a partnership with the school districts more than it is that. I, I had to concur. I mean, our kids got to feel safe at school. There's, there's no other way to put it. I mean, I don't know what all the answers are, but 
maybe this is maybe other people. I think will this fall. is a first step to put us at the forefront of a lot of people and yeah. in front of a lot of things that are occurring. It's unheard of for a city this size to have three school resource officers. Right. So I think it's an outstanding first step, and it's just that a first step. And we've also committed ourselves to we will be in every classroom next year to promote safety training with the students at appropriate grade based training for students and staff at the same time. But like I said, next Tuesday night, it'll be going before the school board. I would encourage anybody to reach out to the school board members and support them in their efforts. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. All right, our next meeting will be April 3rd at 7 p.m. 2018, and this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>